Greetings, boils, ghouls, and zools. It's your Texas Kalashnikov massacre. Goblin wolf. I'm just coming to you today to talk to you about license to carry. We're going to talk about all these new shooters out there, and we're going to talk about gatekeeping. So today is the first day of the month, October 1st, Kalash month or Halloween month. So this is the best month of the year. We're going to start this with Kalash Bash, get a little mid-month snack with Texas Kalashnikov, then we got Red October, and we're going to bookend it, of course, with Halloween, and of course we're going to have a nice Halloween shoot. So why are we talking about License to Carry on a channel that primarily talks about rifles? Well, I don't know your motivation for gun ownership. Mine primarily is I love shooting, I love history, and I love collecting. So all those interests, when it comes to AKs, wow, all those seem to meet real nicely in the middle. There's a nice juicy Venn diagram for me if I do say so myself. So another reason we're talking about license to carry, I'm in Texas. We have a new permitless carry law. It is not a constitutional carry law. Those are two different things. This is not codified into the constitution of Texas. This is a permitless carry law. It says you may open carry or conceal carry a pistol without a permit where allowed. There are restrictions to where you can carry your legal pistol legally. So you need to be aware of that. Here in Texas, they call it a 3005, 3006, and 3007 sign. It's going to be, there are going to be signs in the corner. It's going to say 30.05, 30.06, 30.07. What those are, are different restrictions upon where you can carry and who can carry them. So maybe you have a store, you post one of these signs. You may have a sign that says, you can prohibit carry. You may prohibit carry from unlicensed holders. Or you may prohibit open carry, but allow concealed carry. There are different various scenarios. They can post any combination of these signs they like. You have to read the signs, put the math together yourself. You'll go over this in your LTC class. There will definitely be a portion on this. Generally, your LTC class is going to cost somewhere between $50 and $75, depending on where you go. You're going to need a pistol. You're going to need ammo. That's fairly obvious. Lots of ranges do have them for rent. That's not a problem. I just actually did an LTC class this morning, and I ended up having to rent a pistol. We'll go through that in a minute. But things happen. So we're going to talk a little bit about these new shooters as well. All these new shooters in the world, that means there's going to be a huge wide open market now. What should you buy? What kind of things should you look for? What kind of things are comfortable for the average person? So let's go through a couple of those. So here we have a Smith & Wesson M&P 22 Compact. This is a nice little pistol. This guy was a bit dirty today. It did not like the ammo I brought with. It was actually a little light for it. So uh, keep that in mind if you're looking for a 22 for daily carry. 22 is not something I generally recommend for daily carry. Despite the nice recoil and everything, you do often have problems with cleaning. You do often prob have problems with ammo type. And you do have to really find what works for you every single time. It is possible to have a nice 22 that will fire all the time. But, but the fact of the matter is, is a 22 sometimes just does jam. They do get very, very dirty. It's very dirty ammo. Despite having a large hand, it actually fits in my hand pretty nicely. The Smith & Wesson here was a loner. It's very accurate. Um, I, apparently it's a cheap little pistol too, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't go for too much. Sights are actually very nice on it. Put that guy to the side. Ended up having to actually rent a uh, 22 caliber Glock for the class, so... Um, yeah, keep that in mind. If you choose to have a 22, you're going to have to really experiment with ammo. Find something. Generally, people go with some CCI. A lot of people go with CCI. Stuff works. With a good 22, it'll go bang. It'll definitely go bang. But every now and again, you do have a problem with a 22. They do get very dirty, and you do need to clean them after every single time you shoot these things. Please clean your guns. That way, it will actually shoot the next time you want to shoot it. Moving on, we've got probably one of the other most popular carry pistols, a Glock. This is a Glock 22. Uh, this one is actually an old cop trade-in gun. Um, came with uh, Trigicon sights, can't really complain about that, but 
it is a 40 caliber. This is a full size pistol. For a person with a large hand, that's how it fits in my hand. You can also get a Glock 19. It's got a slightly shorter barrel. Many people prefer a Glock 19 for daily carry. That's what you're looking at width wise. And to compare with the 22, this is a thinner gun. Look at the grip. But you do have a full sized adult hand sized gun. The sizing on this 22 is identical to a Glock 17. You can actually get a conversion barrel for this and uh, turn it into a 9mm. Put in your standard Glock 9mm mags and you're good to go. What I really tend to like about a Glock, right out of the factory, right out of the factory, these polymer grips, absolutely fantastic. They were very, very comfortable. Very easy to get stipled if you'd really like to. And uh, the stippling it does come with is very, 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 very comfortable. So you can also throw over a uh, rubber grip. Some people like to do that. I've seen some people that like the hockey tape. Different strokes for different folks, man. That's up to you. That's completely up to you. Me, I just like bare pistol. This is not something I personally conceal carry myself, but it is a fine, fine pistol. I just actually liked it simply for the history that it is a old cop trading gun. Uh, this is one of the most popular pistols for police in the past 20 years nearly. So um, you had a couple different ones. I mean, you know, you had the SIGs, you had the uh, H and Ks, you had the uh, you had the Smith and Wessons even in the LAPD, the 45s. Or they, they got 40, was it 4506? Alonzo's pistols, man. Um, so moving on. So let's say you're a real rad Chad and you need a gun for a dad. That's when you're looking at something full sized, like a 1911. People do daily carry 1911s. I see it all the time. This particular one, not very heavy, does have a rail on it. I've actually never had a jam on this guy, but I mean, a 1911 is a full metal framed gun, so it does weigh quite a bit compared to something like a Glock, but it does have a very nice trigger, what some would argue is the best trigger of any pistol ever made. Um, me personally, I'm a dad. I like dad guns. It's definitely a great pistol. As you know, not a huge pistol guy, but I do like my dad gun. It's definitely a fantastic pistol. You know, I'd have nicer 1911s and whatnot. I uh, probably will pick up some at some point, but you know, I, I do really love this gun. And it's on a Taurus. This is a fantastic pistol. I don't let internet hipsterism ruin my uh, buying power. So this particular model is a PT 1911 AR. So um, my friends back home, this is your fully automatic AR 47. Um, this guy will shoot 8,000 rounds a minute. Pardon my hyperbole. I am proudly from California, but we got some whacked fucking gun laws, and I know it. Don't get me wrong. I don't hate my home state. I love my home state quite a bit, but the reality of the fact is it has some whacked-ass gun laws, and if I can't bring my rifles there, then I can't work. The fact of the matter is, is when you want to be in the gun industry, that many restrictions aren't exactly conducive to gun ownership. So, not exactly the greatest thing if you want to, if you want to be in the gun industry. So, some concerns to talk about between different pistols. Magazine capacity. Magazine capacity is a big thing. You do only have max eight shots with your 1911. With a uh, Glock, with a 40, you're looking at 14, but that round count does increase if you get a nine millimeter, which I gotta be honest with you, I think this one's gonna be a nine millimeter very, very soon, just because I think it would be funny to still have 40 on the side of it, but you know, uh, gotta do it for the memes. Speaking of, at the gun shop today, I saw a gun I didn't even know existed. It was a high point 380. Oh man, talk about a meme cannon right there. 380, little tiny boy, oh my god, man. I kinda wanted to buy that piece of shit. If I had an extra $200. Uh, <laughs> so we've gone through a few pistols here. There are many, 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 many options. But now that you got some magazine capacity, so with this tiny little Smith & Wesson though, 
Here's the real caveat, is a single feed, so despite being a tiny little pistol, the 9mm and 40 caliber is obviously smaller than 45, so if your 1911 is holding 8 rounds, you got a 45 ACP right here, this is a 1911 mag, and if you're going to step down in size, obviously next step down, 40. Next step down, you're going to get 14, so you step up from 8 to 14 with this Glock right here. When it comes to these smaller pistols, is these 22s are single feed, so despite being tiny, much tinier round, it only holds 10. So why do you want a license to carry? Why do you want to carry a gun on you? Maybe you feel the need for self-protection. Maybe you have a large property. Maybe you walk off that property every now and again. You want to go get the mail or something from the mailbox and you got your pistol on you. You're completely legal if you have your LTC, so you can do whatever you want. Maybe you just want to carry a gun to carry a gun. I wouldn't recommend just open carrying just to do it. I mean, manners are such a thing, but... You know, I mean, so if you really want to walk into your niece's birthday party with a six-shooter on your hip, you could do that. That's up to you. If you're not in a prohibited place, you could do whatever you want. Doesn't mean it's a nice thing to do. So, not saying manners are the law, but you might want to use a little manners in the situation because it does de-escalate and draw less attention to yourself. That's something to think about should you just want to open carry. Should you identify yourself in that situation? Should you be that identifiable in that situation? Depends where you are, depends who you're with, and depends on what you want to do. So maybe you just feel like walking around the house with a gun in your pocket. You could do that if you like. Maybe you want a license to keep carrying that gun. You're gonna need a holster in Texas. So keep that in mind. If you're just carrying it around in your pocket for whatever reason, get yourself a holster. It's definitely gonna serve you nicely in the end. It's a lot more comfortable, redistributes the weight across your belt much better than just throwing it in your dickies. So we talked about a few options for pistols. We talked about maybe why you even wanna carry. It's not exactly the most solid question. You can do whatever you like. You can do whatever you like, but reasons to carry, self-defense, because you want to, because you can, or, or maybe you just want to have your license for transportation and you just want to throw it in a holster for whatever. Some people like to do that. I've seen people just walk into a range with a gun on their hip, walk out, fire, put it away, and leave. So if you're allowed to do that at that range, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Maybe you just want to give your pistol a workout. So also when it comes to your selection of pistol, you should put into account, is this something you're going to be carrying out of the house? Is this primarily for home defense? Do you plan on actually getting a rifle or a shotgun? I mean, when it comes down to it from door to door, the spread of a shotgun. Oh, Joe B's got something for him. And uh, you, wanna, you want something that you can carry out in the world and in the home. Maybe you want to look at something with a larger caliber, like a 1911 for around the home. But you do have to keep in mind about that magazine capacity we talked about because maybe you're not a Navy SEAL and maybe you can't just crack 17 rounds at one thing and hit it every single time. I'm personally not the greatest shooter myself. I'm actually fairly new to a lot of the type of shooting I do, so I have no shame in saying it. And that's why I keep saying, maybe we can learn something together, maybe we can become better shooters together. Because I am not new to guns, I'm not a new gun owner, but there's a lot of things about guns I'm always trying, I always love to try something new. Me personally, I was always a casual owner, I just got into collecting, and then all of a sudden I get into tactical shooting, so... Yeah, as my interests, they definitely go all over the place. But shooting number one, history and collecting, number two and three. And honestly, I'm not really sure all three of those have any kind of Misha Co. order. Get some uh, Carl Casarda hair here. Um, ribbit heads for the win, baby. All right, I'm a little itchy because I'm 38 years old and I'm dying on the inside and out. So again, reasons maybe why you want to conceal carry. Personal protection. Maybe you just want to have your gun on the hip around the house and be able to leave without having to take it on and off. That's certainly a possibility. Maybe you just feel like it. You're allowed to do it. Welcome to America. So there is one more scenario that may be applicable for you if you want your LTC, and that is buying a gun. So background checks 
If you have an LTC, are instant when you go to buy a gun. If you go to buy a new AK, so let's say you're hopping on that Zastava train. Oh, it's such a fun word. So let's say you go in to get one of these new Zastavas, you're even picking up an M90, M85, whatever it may be, and you go fill out your forms and you say, I am not addicted to marijuana, I am not an illegal resident, and am I Hispanic? You get your form filled out, you submit it, Normally, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna wait maybe 10, 20 minutes or something like that. Sometimes have to come back the next day and you're gonna wait for the ATF to do their background check. And if you present your LTC upon purchase, your background check is instant. And you can walk out of there with your gun right as you pay for it, basically. And one more thing about new shooters is get training. Anybody you could possibly train with, a friend, buddy, if you could just get to a range by yourself even, Crack on some YouTube and learn a little bit. Do what you can. Do whatever you can. If it's all you can afford, it's all you can afford. And that's why we're going to talk a little bit about gatekeeping. So one reason I think it's so important not to be a gatekeeper, you do not want to scare off all these new shooters. Maybe you do for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe they're a libtard or whatever. Really, no. I don't really care about your weird politics. What is gatekeeping here in the gun community? Basically what that is, is crapping on somebody else's gear, crapping on their technique, and offering nothing constructive, and just overall insulting the person for absolutely no reason. Essentially what this does is it drives new shooters away. It really does stifle interest for people. Not everybody is your iron heart, no soul, cold person. Some people have feelings and don't want to really hear these things. I'm not sure really why you would want to scare off a new fellow gun owner. If you have a very absolute gun agenda, you want new shooters. So another reason it's very important not to be a gatekeeper is it just makes the range, the spaces where people like to talk about guns, maybe the maybe a forum or something like that, um, you know, it just makes these spaces overall much more pleasant for everybody, much less toxic. And really everybody is at a different stage with gear and skill. So when it comes down to it, sure, you could spit some technique, but there is absolutely no reason to insult somebody just because they don't know what you know or they can't. Remember this importantly, can't do what you can do. Some people don't have the same ability as others. It does not mean they are not working towards that ability. You just got to give them time. You got to give people space. You got to let people breathe and you got to let people be their own person. And this includes the parts on rifles, absolutely nothing wrong with strike industries if you like it it's just cheap stuff i'm not sure if the problem is the origin of manufacture or if people just genuinely don't like this stuff but personally metal is metal and it seems to be very much in the same range as pretty much everything else in its price point nothing particularly interesting about strike to me there's nothing really any more interesting to me about that than a taurus so really, the reasons a lot of people mad at Taurus is, number one, they did have some recalls on some pistols, so it, it generally does bleed into some stories about how all their pistols have problems. It's like if you had one Nissan with a problem, and then all of a sudden Nissans are pieces of crap. Remember you heard this about Ford Pintos, how they all explode? Remember how they said every piece of crime in the 80s was a result of... This crack epidemic was uh, causing the problems that were ruining everybody's lives. Not to say there wasn't any crack, I'm just saying that the majority of the crimes in that crime wave had nothing to do with crack. It's just a very convenient stereotype for a certain persons that are stereotyped to smoke crack. Who could that be, Uncle Sam? Way off topic here, and I'm sounding like a Taurus fanboy, but, but for real, I'm talking about it because gatekeeping. Like I said, I ain't ever had a problem with this gun. It shoots every time. I do clean it, but I mean, it doesn't get any more special maintenance than any other 1911 ever. It's just a 1911. I, I could definitely say I like it better than a Rock Island. That's just me personally. This particular 1911 from Taurus really ain't all that far off from those new Kimbers. But from what I understand, they're not making them in-house anymore. They have a, a third party making them. So um, don't quote me on that, but you know, that's just a word around the campfire. But frankly, I don't own any Kimbers, so. 
so really to wrap this up, I just want to say be nice to people. You don't know what their skill level is. You don't know how long they've been shooting. You don't know how long they've been doing what they've done or owned what they owned. So there's absolutely no reason to judge. There's no reason to guard the entry to gun ownership. There's no reason to guard the entry to gun passions. So if you can encourage these passions, it's only better for you in the end anyhow. So we've talked about a few different viewpoints. We've talked about a few different options on maybe what you're looking at when you're going to conceal carry. We've talked about those magazine capacities and just really think about that. You really got to think about that. You might be pulling the trigger quite a few times. You might not be a Navy SEAL and hit every single time. So that's something to really think about. And we definitely talked about being nicer at the range. This is definitely its own little epidemic, and it's not the coolest thing on the planet. I experience it. I'm sure you experience it. I don't know anybody that hasn't experienced it at some point in their career of gun ownership. So if you made it to the end here, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening to me babble about this. We'll get you another new video in a couple days here. We're gonna try to increase this upload schedule just a little bit because we're gonna be filming quite a bit more. So I'm gonna try to get these videos out to you a little bit faster. Working on a mechanism just to edit them slightly faster. And um, looks like this new channel absolutely is happening. Um, it's gonna be called Fireteam X. So keep an eye out for that. We might have to shift into actually more of these little talks here. I don't know how much this one's going to feature shooting much. So, you know, if there's something that you think I can improve upon when I'm talking about this subject matter, please do not feel afraid to offer that. I'm totally friendly. I'm not afraid to make a mistake in public. So even though I'm cutting this off the top of my head like a script simply because I'm speaking off the top of my head and I stutter and stuff and I don't want to have to put you through that, I do actually think you should be prepared. All right, boils, ghouls, and zools. We have made it to the end here, and we've talked about a couple things, and I want to thank you for joining me. And if you like this content, Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really obviously helps me. So if you want me to cover a certain thing on here, talk about a certain thing, please let me know. We're trying to build up. I only want to offer a bit of entertainment, share my passions of these beautiful weapons with you, and hopefully you can learn something, I can learn something, you become a better shooter, I become a better shooter. So thank you guys. I'll see you next week.